I'm going to hold still, please. Oh, good job. Mm. Oh, hello. Ah, I didn't hear you come in. Great. Great to see you all. All my friends kept, are back. Great, yes. Ava, Maddie, yes, good to see you. Peyton, Delaney, yes. Olivia, bright and bright and wonderful. Charlotte, Caroline, amazing. You're all here. And yes, Miss Red and Miss Puckett, Miss Way. Yes, all my friends came back. Good to see you all. Welcome back to the Philly Art Institute. Yes. I'm glad you could all come back this week. We are still celebrating the joy of Easter. And as you could... Oh, I'm sorry. Some of you may be new here. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is uh, Piet Mondrian Guernica. No, and, you're not. Uh, pardon? Hmm, did you hear that? Th they don't think that my name is Piet Mondrian Guernica. You're missing it. Right, yes, that was a joke. Yes, yes. Yes, my name is not, in fact, Piet Mondrian Guernica. Yes, it is Mr. Nick, but I am a painter here at the Philly Art Institute. Uh, what I'm working on today is a, uh, a portrait of uh, Napoleon here. And uh, actually, I'm kind of experimenting with uh, different types of uh, art, uh, abstract art to be exact, and cubism. And uh, I'm working on this portrait here. And, mm -hmm. Oh, hello, Sean. Good to see you again. Yes, yeah, you, you of course know my assistant, Sean the Sheep. And um, yeah, yes, I am doing a portrait here of Napoleon. Mm -hmm. Oh, you'd like to see it, would you? Yeah, of course, oh, it's nearly done, but sure. Let's see here. Uh, there we go. Uh, oh, what do you think, Sean? Sean, you get back here. You get back here right now, this minute. Well, that wasn't very nice. I've worked very hard on this painting. What? What do you mean it wasn't what you expected? This is a legitimate painting technique and over a hundred years old. No, it's not just paint thrown upon the canvas. There's, the, there's a reason and logic to this. Yes! No, no. There's a lot of history and technique and tradition has been building to make this type of technique. You just didn't come out of the blue. Well, it came out of the blue period, yes, but... Uh, no, no, no. You obviously don't understand the history of art. Let me explain. For a long time, uh, when you look at a painting, you only saw one point of view. But objects in the real world have many different sides. For example, a statue has multiple sides. Front, side, side, and back. But what if you wanted to paint a picture that showed front, side, and back all at once? Is that possible? Well, people take globes and flatten them into maps. Perhaps you could do the same with a painting. Painters like Picasso and Brock looked for ways of painting pictures that showed numerous angles simultaneously. They found inspiration from the past in works of Cezanne and even old African masks. They began to reduce objects in painting to simple shapes like triangles and squares. Many early critics were shocked by what they saw, calling the style cubism. They hadn't expected art to go this direction. However, other critics understood how Picasso, Brock, and others had learned from the painting techniques of the past and had used it to take painting to the next level. Based on their knowledge of painting history, these critics understood that this is where art had been headed. Actually, that reminds me of a story. If you were here last week, you know that we talked about how God won the decisive victory against evil, sin, and death 
through the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus. Jesus had been killed on the cross. He suffered horribly. But God brought him back to life, defeating death, evil, and sin. In fact, we asked the question, who saves us from sin? The answer was, of course, Jesus saves us from our sin. Jesus' disciples had wanted God to intervene and defeat evil, sin, and death. And God did. But it hadn't happened the way they'd expected. We have a great story today. Check this out. On the same day that Jesus was resurrected, two of Jesus' disciples were walking to a village called Emmaus. Emmaus was about seven miles from Jerusalem. The two disciples were talking about everything that had happened. While they were talking, Jesus came up and began walking with them. They did not recognize Jesus. What are you talking about, Jesus asked. The disciples stopped walking. They looked sad. One of the disciples said, Are you the only person in Jerusalem who doesn't know what has happened these last few days? What happened, Jesus asked. The disciples told him about Jesus, the man from Nazareth. He was a prophet, they said. He was powerful, and he did and said wonderful things. But the religious leaders handed him over to be killed, and he died on a cross. We were hoping that he was the one who was going to save Israel. The disciples said that these things happened three days ago. They said that some women had gone to the tomb that morning, but they could not find Jesus' body. The women said they had seen angels, and the angels said Jesus was alive. Some of us who followed Jesus went to the tomb, and it was just as the women said, they explained. They did not see Jesus. His body was not there. Jesus said to them, Don't you believe everything the prophets said? Did the Messiah have to suffer and die to be glorified? Then Jesus taught the two disciples everything in the scriptures that was written about him. He talked about the books written by Moses and the prophets. Jesus and the two disciples arrived at Emmaus, and they asked Jesus to stay with them. So Jesus joined them at the dinner table. He took the bread, thanked God for it, and broke it into pieces. Then he gave the pieces to the disciples. Right away, the men realized who the man was, Jesus. But immediately, Jesus disappeared from their sight. The two disciples thought about their walk to Emmaus. When Jesus talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures, didn't our hearts feel like they were on fire? They immediately left Emmaus and went back to Jerusalem. They found Jesus, his 11 disciples, and others who gathered with them. They told them what happened and how they recognized Jesus when he was at dinner with them. The 11 had news for them too. They said Jesus had appeared to Simon Peter. Jesus is alive. The Bible is about Jesus. When Adam and Eve sinned, God began working out his plan to send Jesus to rescue people from sin. All of the Old Testament points forward to Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, the time when Jesus would bring God's promised salvation for sinners. Jesus taught that all the scriptures point to him. Jesus' disciples longed for the day when God would redeem Israel, defeat their enemies, fulfill the promises to Abraham, and act decisively in the world. Yet, when God finally did act in the way they'd always hoped, it didn't happen the way they expected. They didn't expect the Messiah to suffer and die. They didn't expect him to be brought back to life. This was also very shocking to them. But Jesus could look back to the Old Testament and point out Isaiah 53, Psalms 22, 31, Daniel 7 and others, and say it was there all the time. The suffering of the Messiah, his resurrection, 
This is where the story of Israel was always headed. None of this should be an unexpected surprise. This had been God's plan for saving Israel and the world from the very beginning. Our verse for this series comes from Romans chapter 10, verses 9. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If we put our faith in God, honor Jesus as Lord, follow his teachings, and believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, we too will be saved from evil, sin, and death. Because who saves us from our sin? Only Jesus saves us from sin. And when we have faith in Jesus and honor him as Lord, that shows that we too have been saved. Oh, oh, there's the whistle. That means our time is almost up. But before we go, we always like to do a prayer. So please, bow your heads and close your eyes. Heavenly Father, we thank you that from the very beginning, you had a plan to save us all from ourselves, from sin, evil, and death, and uh, bring us into a close relationship with you. We thank you that you send your son Jesus uh, to die for our sins and save us. And we just pray that we can continue to follow your teachings and all that we're doing. Uh, help us to be good disciples of your son. And we pray for our, our country and our community and our church. And just uh, continue to help us and protect us and guide us in all that we do so that we could uh, bring glory to you and, and your Son, and help all those in need. We thank you for all you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, that's all the time we have for this week. Uh, please come back again next week when we will finish our Joy of Easter celebration. Uh, I am holding still. I encourage Sean to uh, try his hand, or rather hoof, an abstract painting in Cubism. He is actually in the process of, of making a portrait of me. So, yes. Oh, well, you're done. Good. Let's see what you've come up with. Sean! <laughs> that looks nothing like me. No, what? Where'd you go? Come back here right now. My nose is that big? See you again next week.